Oh, why am I holding this? Oh, we're doing it quickly. Hello. Um, we're all set and ready to go. First letter tonight, uh, yes, we're all a bit porky. It worries me, but not enough day by day to do anything about it. We're all getting much bigger. Second letter tonight, before all the guests come in and start attacking them. My 32-year-old daughter, who is a very undisciplined but good-hearted girl, confessed to me that she's been having an affair with none other than... Dot, dot, dot. You'll have to wait and see. And the last letter tonight. Some of our best citizens today are those who we had to lock away in previous war times. All these letters, terrific lineup coming up right now. Don't go away. Sweet and sour. See you soon. Thank you, Dad. That was good. Got a problem, big or small? Would a miracle be nice? Our monthly crew is back, churning out advice. You might even laugh a bit in the following half hour. Park your backside on the couch, cause baby it's time for Sweet and Sour. Right here on Sweet and Sour. Good evening everyone, <laughs> welcome to Sweet and Sour. We're talking about, American what is it? Resting bitch face. Resting bitch face. Well, welcome Indian. Gary Mitchell with you for the next half hour. And a terrific lineup of guests. Hello my mate Glenn, how are you sir? <laughs> no, keep doing it, keep doing it. Do it again, do it again, they didn't see it. That's, well, that that's is an I example of resting bitch face, I'm, which is Glenn. Oh, yeah, I'm resting bitch face, that's pretty much, I, I'm, I am a fully awake bitch face all of the time. <laughs> yeah, just making it up, guys. Just making it up. Yeah. Hello, Lisa. Hello. How are you? I'm very well. Give us your Thank resting you. bitch face. Your best no, no, I can't do that right now. <laughs> I'm not a bitch, and I don't have a resting bitch face. face. You should have seen her before the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Anita. Hello. What about Long you? Can you do a resting bitch face for us? Oh, what about now? <laughs> That's actually pretty good. Okay, okay now we've got to stop doing it. Stop doing it now. Of... Sorry. <laughs> well, where's yours, Des? I'm sitting on it. <laughs> Welcome I'm... all of our panellists tonight. We're going to go straight into our letter. Are you ready, everyone? Oh. Have you read the letters tonight? No. Yes. Three yeah. times. Three times? All right. I went to school with Jen Fat. Lies. You went... <laughs> Gen Fat, first letter coming out. <laughs> Hi everyone, I come from a family where each of us would comfortably fit a new category I heard today, Chunkster. Yes, we're all a bit porky. It does worry me, but day by day I'm not sufficiently uncomfortable to do anything about it. To be honest, I think I'm fat and happy, just worried about the health implications long term, so I need to act. I heard on the ABC that perhaps we're all addicted to junk food, whatever that is, and we've all been seduced to crave it. I don't know what junk food is to be honest. And here's your problem. It's just normal food for this person. I don't know what junk food is. Mm. I don't know I why... I know about McDonald's and chicken treats. I don't need that. Thank you to our sponsors, stuff. McDonald's and chicken treats. <laughs> I don't know why previous generations of my extended family were all slim, oh. except for the odd individual <laughs> here and there. But in the last probably 30 years, all of my clan has put on weight and my kids are now also very heavy. I heard on the ABC today that two thirds of women, get this, because I Googled it and he's right. I heard on the ABC today that two thirds of women and 80% of men over 45 are overweight. They're not obese, they're overweight. Ah. And, the, and the obese statistic was incredible. It's like 25, 27% <coughs> of all people are overweight in the Western world. And with kids under 25, a quarter of them are overweight. So what do you think is really going on with our food and the food industry now? Because my parents were skinny when they married. <laughs> But, but fat now. That's marriage. And my grandparents, all four, were never fat. Why do we have this unhealthy epidemic, Judy of Carlisle in WA? Judy, where have you been? Seriously, I think, I think find you yourself in a shopping centre and just have a look at people walking by. You've where been to Carlisle, though, right? You've explained right? everything. Oh every my reason goodness. why it is right there. Lisa. Yes. Um, well, you're not overweight. Do you come from a family that's overweight? Not really. <laughs> She's being diplomatic. <laughs> Not really. Okay. No. No, no. no. What's <laughs> junk food? Do you know what junk food is? Oh, God. <laughs> She's thinking I about do know what junk food is. And I grew up having uh, <laughs> McDonald's on Sundays and or on fish Sundays. and chips. 
On Sundays? On Sundays. And personally, on Sundays. On Sundays. And we, but we always had a home cooked meal as well, so we were very fortunate. At the same time? No. <laughs> we come home from school, and I was lucky that mum stayed at home. But personally, this whole concept of chunkster, I even love the word chunkster. Chunkster. Yeah, chunkster. chunkster. And as long as you're you happy, it does. Yes. This was, I'm surprised you're not marking it. With... Thanks, Homer Simpson. <laughs> exactly. As long as you're happy, that's the main thing. And it, it, they all say it's all because of sugar, there's too much sugar in everything. At the end of the day, if you're happy, that's important. But it's true, when you're younger, you might be a bit skinnier, then you get married, you get a bit chunkier. That's chunkster. Um, <laughs> so, that's, that's exactly. Just, hang on, that's accepted culture, though, is that? Well, yeah. a positive in, culture for our health, In et certain Mediterranean cultures, sure. Well, it? that was the traditional. That's a, no, absolutely, you're yeah, right. Certainly so, cultural and the problem right. is yeah. today... Mm -hmm. the problem Here we is go. <laughs> the problem is today <laughs> is that <laughs> it's technology's problem. Unfortunately, we're all on our iPhones and social media and all the apps and all the fun things that I, too, spend a lot of my time on. Sure. And I love being on there. Sure. And when, you, Game when you're on there... Game <laughs> I love Game of War as well, yeah, by the way. I, not people's head game of War. You need to exercise more. I've lost not control. Yeah. She has lost control. Yeah. Because of that, we're going straight over to Glenn. <laughs> oh, game look, this war. is... Um, now, game let's, just, let's yeah. just think about this, right? When people are young, they are skinny. And then they get older and they get fatter. Not all but that's them. only now. That's only that now. That used to happen. Do they stop moving? Is that what's happening with you, Judy? Get your ass off the couch, Judy. Stand up, Judy, right now, stand up. Move, Judy, move. Pick up your phone and go on Facebook. Find an app. Find an app to tell you how to run. Find a Facebook I've got group. about five of them, if She's you want to know. She's got about five of them. And they work them. really well. Right, yes, <laughs> they do. Again? They do. <laughs> they do. Look, Judy, I would rather see you than all of those friends of mine on Facebook who are like, Jenny just ran 5.3 Ks in seven and a half minutes. Um, and that's when I go into resting bitch face. You know what? Just embrace it. Be who you are. If you're happy, just be happy. The health implications? Oh, whatever. What? Do you want to spend 90 years being skinny or do you want to spend 65 eating what you want? Feeling yeah. good and being chunked up. Right. Yeah, yeah. chunk it up. Says the two skinny people up there into the freaking panel. <laughs> hey, hey, look, I, I, what's, I am. What's junk yeah. food? Thank you. Junk food. What's like junk food? Fast not that I'm saying food, that you're not one of the skinny people up there. Oh my god. What's not, in, what's in not, the food that makes it junk? <laughs> All the preservatives and the chemicals yeah. and, the, and the sugar and, and the, the fat sugar and, and the, the salt fats and the saturated fats. It's like it's not like it used to be. Like years ago, we used to go catch our food. You know, you used to what? do what? Yeah. You know, back in the you <laughs> never went and caught your food. But I was talking no, about that was did. the name of the restaurant. We catch used to our food. Have food. No, yeah. back in my grandparents, like where I'm a non. Now yeah. we used to they used to do the chicken. No, they used no. to like my you know kill same. the chicken and then no. pluck it. And then by the time we ate it, it was like two days later. Mum used to mum said that when she was growing up, just hang and dry. They would eat them. They would supplement, over they would supplement their food with Hang rabbit. On. No one can hear anything, one at a time. My, I know, my, Darren. My, my Come was, on, it's my, my turn I was right talking now. about this to Mum yesterday, and she was saying when she was growing up, they supplemented their... Because I think there was leftover rationing going on still, but mm. they, they supplemented their meat by going and catching rabbit. Like, you can't do that now because they've Protein. got diseases. But, you know, <laughs> apart from anything else. else. But Although my next door neighbours have a couple of tasty ones in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> They're yeah. well fed by the look of those. not eat fresh and... Do you know, it's too easy to go down the shop and get a pre-packaged meal right. and sit in front of the TV and eat it. There's a study that came out of America and they're now putting it everywhere, online, Facebook, whatever. The one thing that you can do to improve your health mm -hmm. by 100%... Get rid of your mirror? ...is just eat at home. Because mm -hmm. oh, everything else has got yeah. flavour enhancers, mm -hmm. yeah. um, colour enhancers, etc. Yeah. And it's all salt, sugar, and fat. Eat at home and cook it yourself. If it comes You'll out stay of the packet, normal. it's probably Yum, not great. I'm hungry. Well, I think the television is a big thing. Yeah. Eating while you're watching the television. Yeah. You know, eat, go for a walk. Walk, have something to eat. We, we like, didn't actually talk about the, the fat industry which made us fat, or the sugar industry that sugar. made us fat. Everything that's light sugar, sugar, sugar. that oh. actually made us fat. Yeah. Anything that's light makes you fat. Well, when, when are we going to take responsibility for ourselves, Gary? <laughs> now. Nah. During, <laughs> During the break. When we come back, we're alone? talking about a good-hearted girl that's off having an affair with someone who shouldn't be having an affair. Oh. Don't go away. Now let's get those burgers out. <laughs> <laughs> Getting in touch with Sweet and Sour is easy. Just head to sweetandsour.net.au to send us a letter. And while you're there, why not check out past episodes? 
Plus, don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And for a behind the scenes look at Sweet and Sour, check us out on Instagram. And for everyone that sends us a letter, we're going to send you to the movies, courtesy of Natalie Cameron and NRC Communications. And the movie we're sending you to, there it is. Gods <laughs> and it's of not Egypt. Oh, no, in the yes. corner. Gods, Gods of, of Egypt. Egypt. Gods of Egypt. Oh, very good. But we'll all sound very British. Yeah, well, I've mean, done this before. Gods of yes. Egypt. Gods of Egypt. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> this one's titled Heavenly Sorted. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> dear, dear men and women of the panel. Ooh. Oh, this is so formal. <laughs> The world has turned terribly upside down. I'm a regular church-going woman and I'm in my late 60s. It upsets me that all churches are tarnished in these terrible waves of abuse accusations mm -hmm. being revisited because of the Royal Commission. I'm now confronting my own similar issue and am at a loss to know what to do. To cut a long story very short, my 32-year-old daughter, who's, very, who's a very undisciplined but good-hearted girl, <laughs> confessed to me the other day that she's been having an affair with none other than my own parish priest. Was this in a confessional? He's a married man, a good man, and oh. I've known him for many years. I just have no idea what to do. I sit next to his wife, uh, 40, uh, to his 45-year-old wife every Sunday, and my daughter has been sitting across from us for the last 12 months, and that's when she started coming along. I'm so stressed that I have to leave immediately at the conclusion of Sunday services. Men are men, but priests have set themselves a higher bar and this is being compromised. I can't tolerate this entire situation bar and I feel I Don't must it. bring it to a head. I simply can't work out uh, a, a kind and loving way in how to approach spilling the beans here. I need your panellists' help. Catherine of Armadale oh. in Victoria. Anita. Wow. Have you ever have you ever gone to church and thought, geez, that priest is a bit of all right? Never, ever, ever. God. <laughs> you're, going, you're going to the wrong church. Why? <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> wow. Um, where do I start here? This is just very wrong. This has gone against every single value and moral of of you know Christianity and chastity. Just everything that that the church preaches, and what I don't like is um, the but fact church, that you're like church also preaches preaches forgiveness. So, mm. you know. Yeah, but you're oh. saying a good man. He's a good man, but he's obviously having an affair. He's human. Good men can do that. He's human. Not he just has human we so all do. Disrespectful. He shouldn't be preaching as a priest. I'm so sorry. what would you do though? She's writing in to say, well, what do I do? You know, I'm sitting there and his wife's on this side of me and my daughter's on that side of me and I know what's going on and I have to leave because I'm being traumatised. What do you do? Yeah, I don't Do you spill her. the beans or do you just not go to church, change your parish or what? What do you do? That's why she's writing in. She wants to know what to do. She needs to just keep her mouth shut because... Don't spill the beans. No, yeah. well, this is going to get really messy. She's no, going to break up There's been enough beans spilled. Yeah, <laughs> enough um, mouths open. Clean up the Look, beans. Look, hopefully, clean hopefully, we, we, we hopefully, being the good man that the priest is and the good girl that your daughter is, hopefully they'll realise that what they're doing is disrespectful, um, wrong. He'll it's have so enough hope. and end it. He'll, yeah. He'll or it. she'll have enough and then He'll end it. Enough. Someone and else they'll both go to confession. Come on in, Dad. And all their sins will be like washed away. Well, and, and this is the thing, confession is there for the purpose of forgiving people of their sins. So the church is reasonably realistic about understanding that people aren't necessarily living up to the expectations they're required to. For a start, I thought you were going to get into very, very different territory from the opening paragraph. Mm -hmm. It's not even vaguely on the same level as the kind of abuse that churches have all been, many churches have certainly been coming under the firing line of. It's not even close to that serious. It's just not that bad. I think maybe it's the best bad. thing to do is it's not great, but I'm not, like it's not child abuse. So I it's would not suggest abuse. I would yeah, suggest yeah, consenting adults. Maybe just change your church. Go to the synod if you're really upset about it. Go over his head and dob him into his well, boss. Like men are men. Yeah, it's okay for men to do it because men are men. You know, Glenn, yeah. are you, and are you going to be well, the, the boogie man or boogie woman <laughs> and spill the beans here? What? Oh no, I'm keeping my beans well and truly canned. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes. What do you what do you say to this poor woman who's oh. not, uh, Catherine of Armadale? It's look. I think the storyline for Bally Kiss Angel is a really great <laughs> idea. Um, I don't believe this letter. For, no, look, I I actually think that what's interesting about this to me is is that if it was a men were men, it would. But it's her parish priest, 
and that's where she's come on un- she's like come unstuck there because it's the parish priest mm. someone she trusted someone she respected someone she's known for many years it's almost like he's doing the dirty on her Oh, that's that. right. I think she's had a crush on him for all of these years. Oh, right? Her, she, her daughter got down and gave a few rosaries, <laughs> and I think that's why she is absolutely jealous of what's happening right now. In the remaining 30 seconds, Lisa, it's Catherine's what? fault, is it? What? This is crazy. The fact that this actually goes on is crazy. And you guys saying, oh, leave the pre, leave the church. And, and, you know, as a man, no, I'm sorry, none of that is good enough. You bring your daughter into line immediately. Shame on her for doing that. You give her a good whack on the bottom, mm. lock her in her bedroom, sh- download She's a whole lot of crap from the internet. <laughs> Absolutely, it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's naughty, naughty girl. But can you imagine as well, on another note, how saucy those confessionals would have been if she's going, Hi. please forgive my sins. Is that what's going on here? I I'm sorry. I don't, I might just Sarah, nearly be 32. Do you think they took place in the confessional? We haven't solved your problem Ooh. in the Someone's confessional. When we come <laughs> back, we're going to be talking about, about who should be locked away. <laughs> By the sounds of things, this priest should be. When we come back, more of Sweet Sarah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What would you do? You know, this show has a little mixture of sweet and sour. And of course, I would be the sweet. And they put me next to the sour. It's a given, isn't it? Why why am I sour and you're sweet? Because look at me. I'm definitely the sweet one. Oh, I'm the sour. And that's us. You don't know what's going on, sorry. <laughs> Welcome back to Sweet Sour. <laughs> Hello, everyone. We forget things. You know, some of our best citizens today are those who we had locked away in previous war times. Mm-hmm. Here in Adelaide, amongst our strong, strongest and proudest are the German and Italian communities. I'm sure during World War II they had hard times as they were interred, but that's what Australia had to do to make the population feel secure and to know that our nation wasn't being undermined. Hard times, hard choices that were necessary at the time. And now look at how integral those communities are to the Aussie way of life. We're now in a war against terror. Perhaps we now have more appropriate ways of dealing with our communities who find themselves attached to the terrorist labels. But the one thing we certainly didn't even consider decades ago was take in people from areas where the threat was greatest. That, however, is what we're doing now in taking refugees. We don't even demand that they be screened or that they swear allegiance to Australia on arrival. We need to keep our population feeling safe and for this reason, I'm not a fan of taking in unfiltered refugees from Terra Central, (laughs) the Middle East and other Islamic nations. And that comes to us from Peter of Adelaide in South Australia. Glenn, to you first, sir. Uh, Peter. Peter, I'm so glad you've written in. (laughs) I'm really happy we get to chat. I'd like to get you now to think clearly about all of the terrorist things that have happened in Adelaide recently. It's actually Kensington. And then I want you to think deeply about all of the people that have died or been harmed because of one punch things, because of drugs, because of alcohol, because the real terrorists are already here. We're already doing damage, Peter. These people are just trying to find a better life for themselves. Um, They're not causing any problems. They're not doing anything that we're already not doing to ourselves. So, um, yeah, thanks for writing in, Peter. (laughs) Never, ever write anything again. (laughs) Again, Lisa. Well, I think, you know, to say that it's not causing any problems, you know, it's causing a lot of problems and the integration is really difficult. Well, it's Peter to write in for a start. Exactly. Does Peter reflect a large proportion of our I think he probably does, yeah. And, like, whenever there is change, people struggle with it. And we are letting in refugees who we don't know, who we don't understand, who don't have assistance with integration, and that can be very difficult. And it's difficult for them and it's difficult for the people who are already in Australia. But the key here is that we want to feel safe. Australians deserve the right to feel safe and that's why we love our country we don't have borders we've got uh, the island um, and it, what that's how the German and Italian and Vietnamese communities felt back in the 50s and 60s when they came in they were uh, isolated they it was difficult for them but they 
ad adopted the way of life and they integrated their own and they fought through it and moved on. And now those communities are the centre of who Australia is today, which is why we are so proud of being multicultural. But I, I understand where this letter is coming from and, I, and because there is a lot of fear around it. And you hear the stories in Cologne where they had the rapes over New Year, which was quite scary and sad. And even in Japan, they let in 27 people out of 10,000 applications, I think it was. And two of those 27 um, cause, like attacked a woman. And Japan is one of the safest places in the world. I've been there many times. So when, you know, and that was a really tough screening process. So there's no right or wrong way. We, we need to, we're a one community now. We, uh, we don't have borders. There, we've got diversification everywhere and somehow we need to find a solution. But I understand where you're coming from and sympathise with you. Um, but careful not to let that prejudice then apply to people who you don't understand because we need to, we need to welcome people into our life and grow as a country. So you're saying in a nutshell then, refugees are refugees, but we need to make sure that we keep our people feeling safe as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank God we've got it. together, yeah. education perhaps, and yes. a lot more resources, I, I think, don't know. I think they're trying to do that. I mean, from what I understand, there is quite a big process for the refugees in order to grant their visas and, and to be um, under protection. And it just comes down to really educating and, communi um, and communicating exactly what um, is expected of them on how, in how, like how to actually act once they get here. Um, obviously, they're fleeing um, for their own protection, um, and um, it's mainly caused by fear as well. So, they're here for a better place. I don't think they're going to cause the fear that this person Peter has. I think it's it's unnecessary. It's not the reality. Refugees aren't actually coming here to cause problems. Yeah. They're running away from their problems to find a Some of the worst terrorists of, of those that have actually been recruited inside of a host country. Like, they're not necessarily yeah, immigrants right. to a country. Mm. They're people that have been converted to that way of thinking mm. who are already the disaffected use, youth of the local area. So, you probably need to think more about the kind of disenfranchised youth in our own country. And think a little bit harder about making sure that we're not the ones that are perpetuating the crazy thoughts that lead to barriers between yeah. races. I still think, though, the sunglasses go to number two. <laughs> <laughs> to number two, who is Catherine of Armadale, who had her daughter having an affair with the Priest. local priest. OK, which one did you like? <laughs> yeah, number two, because that's like a movie. It like Should be. Yeah. 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 Need yeah. some yeah. murders. Yeah. Just throw in a murder. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Which one, okay. I think she's... No. Over here, which one do you like? <laughs> uh, number two. You like number two? Yeah, yeah. number two. Yeah. You like the scandal. That last letter gave well, us some re really decent discussion, though. Yeah, I really thought everybody was... He's an idiot. <laughs> we don't want to reward that. It's, I think we don't the thing want to is, for them. me, the, Gary, the thing is the war on terror, right? It's not a thing. It's a thing politicians concocted and the media. to make and yeah. the media to make us feel un yeah. insecure. And when we feel insecure, we will always the vote with whoever won. is going to be seen to be most rigorous about that. It's exactly why George Bush got in. It's a, it's know, a relatively new phenomenon that we're dealing with, we, and we yeah. will, you know, through the process of education... It's a shame we're not having a war on suicide, or a war on yeah. people dying from drink driving, or a war on people the the war on drugs bullying really gay really people in schools, yeah. you know? And that is why I like that letter to give the pair, but you guys want to go with the letter no, too, because you don't want to reward that. Peter of Adelaide, yeah. OK? We're well, not, yeah, that's it. We're you want to encourage Catherine that. Catherine of Armadale, apparently. All right, coming out to Catherine of Armadale in Victoria, a pair of limited edition sunnies, courtesy of Alon Treves, and we've got to go. Good night, mate. Oh. Tell us about the course. I will look, go to justimprovised.com.au. You can find out how to kind of have fun. And you're telling everybody to sell their properties, Lise. Mm. Yeah, sell, sell, sell. Buy, buy, buy. Both. 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 Yes. It's buyer's <laughs> market. We Lisa. need people to sell, we need people to buy, yes. Not so what are you, a seller or a buyer at the moment? I'm the real estate oh, agent. That's a very, <laughs> she, very she personal she question. Yeah. Either way, Where she wins. Why am I going to go see Lisa? Yay. Yay. Annette going to go and see Lisa. Where's Des going? I'm running for Prime Minister. Yay. Yay. Thank all Thank of our wonderful panellists. Thank our terrific crew and thanks for having us at Home Tonight Australia. Bye. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Wave time. That's it. Good night. See you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>